What's going on, YouTube? I hope you're having a great Father's Day weekend. You know, I figured after the long weekend, we'd start up with more content starting Monday, but Luke Miani put out a fantastic video comparing the iMac and the Mac Mini, and I totally disagree with it. I will be telling you why I think this is gonna be in response to his video, why I think the Mac Mini really is the better buy and the better decision for most people. Uh, but let me preface this by saying Luke Miani's a fantastic creator, probably one of the best tech YouTubers out there, low key. So this video really aims to be more of a conversation starter as opposed to a debate. Uh, but with that being said, you guys know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss as we cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show. So I've done my research before responding to this video and we're going to go bit by bit responding to every point that is made and I'll give my two cents on, you know, why the Mac Mini still wins. Okay, so to the first point that Luke makes about everyone being so fired up about this comparison and people being sure that the Mac Mini is right or the iMac uh, being right. First of all, I don't see this as a bad thing. I love it when people are opinionated. We have too many creators who are unopinionated and don't passionately come down on one side or the other and risk being wrong. Uh, and it's the Granite Geek Show, so you know I'm always gonna be bold with my opinions whether they turn out to be right or turn out to be wrong. And I have been wrong for those of you who aren't new to the channel. But yes, I absolutely am firm in my opinion that the Mac mini is a better buy for most people, but it doesn't mean like I'm super riled up and passionate about it. I'm ready to go fight somebody over it. Um, this is just my opinion based on my analysis and, and looking at the two devices. Now, the next point that Luke makes is that Apple never creates a product that directly overlaps. Key word there is directly because they make a whole bunch of devices that overlap. Hey, you want an iPhone? Here you go. You want an iPhone on your wrist? Here's the Apple Watch. You want an iPhone with a bigger screen? Here's the iPad. So they make devices that pretty much do the exact same thing. So yes, they do not directly overlap. Although I would say there's more overlap here with the Mac Mini and the iMac than probably any other device that Apple currently makes. You know, in my example, iPhone versus Apple Watch versus iPad, the difference is the way that you use them and how mobile and portable they are. But we're talking about two desktops that really sit on a desk and don't go anywhere. And one is a Mac mini, the other is a Mac mini with a 4K display. So it seems that the similarities are being downplayed, but the similarities are the exact reason that he made the video in the first place and why he put up those polls and why I even made my video saying that people should go with the Mac mini over the iMac. It's because they are so similar. So the next point Luke makes is that the iMac is better at being an all-in-one, which granted, it absolutely is, and the Mac Mini is better for being more versatile, being able to switch and swap components over time. And I completely agree with this statement, and both are fine for a desktop user. The only question is, how often do you upgrade and what do you upgrade? Simply put, if you plan on buying a Mac that you will not upgrade for the next five to 10 years, um, no matter what Apple releases in terms of Apple Silicon or new anything, then yeah go with the iMac if you're not upgrading anything at all. But if you even wanna upgrade the webcam or the mic or the speakers or the display, in the next five to 10 years, you're probably gonna be better off going with the Mac mini. Now, the next point that Luke makes is that anybody saying that the iMac is overpriced is just speaking utter nonsense. And he says that, okay, well, the base price for the iMac is around the same price as a MacBook Pro, but what's the big difference there between the iMac and the MacBook Pro? Portability. And you're paying that extra premium for portability. Now you could say you're paying that extra premium for that bigger display, but you can get, I have a 32 inch LG 4K display that I got for $300 off of Amazon, bringing the total price of my Mac mini and display to under $1,000, not $1,299. And a point that Luke brings up later in the video about something one of his commenters said is that you'd be hard pressed to find equal quality peripherals for the Mac mini. And I'm assuming he's talking about a webcam, speakers, a microphone, keyboard and mouse? Well, I have an Amazon shopping cart that begs to differ. Okay, so comparing to the base model of $1299, I've got my Mac mini and 32 inch 4K display for under $1,000. That leaves me about $300 for wiggle room. We have a $74 Apple Magic Mouse 2. We have the four inch Edifier active bookshelf speakers. We have a multi-sync keyboard in space gray. Uh, multi-sync meaning you can use it with multiple devices. We have this right here, the Amazon bestseller K669B from 
from Fifine for $29. We also have a bestseller 1080p webcam from Amazon. And I would argue that all this, save maybe the webcam because of image signal processing and the keyboard, are probably just as good, if not better, than what you get bundled with your iMac. And that took me all of 15 minutes on Amazon to find all of those things. So I don't think that the peripheral argument is a winning one. But next, Luke says that you get all of this in a form factor that is thinner than a USB port. And that is something I absolutely agree with. In terms of looks, absolutely. The iMac is no doubt the prettier of the two. The Mac Mini is a silver box. Okay, not too much to be seen there. But yeah, the iMac in terms of coming in multiple colors and being super thin, yeah, totally wipes the floor with the Mac Mini aesthetically. Then Luke goes on to talk about what's missing in each of the devices, saying, yes, the Mac Mini is missing a screen and the iMac is missing a more powerful chip. The only difference is only one of these problems is fixable. If you get the iMac, you can't get a more powerful chip. You're stuck with that. Whereas with the Mac Mini, you can fix that problem relatively cheaply, certainly under the price of even the base model iMac. Also, with this Mac Mini, you're getting the two USB-C Thunderbolt ports, as well as two USB-A plus HDMI plus a headphone jack, which that is for the base model. $699. You can find it even cheaper on Amazon. The base model iMac, you're getting a weakened chip, only two USB-C Thunderbolt ports, and, and that's to clear up any confusion. You don't get all four of those uh, ports. You don't get two USB-C Thunderbolt and two USB-3 ports. Uh, you have to spend more to get those extra USB ports. Um, so the iMac comes just with two Thunderbolts and a headphone jack. That's not okay. And that clean aesthetic that people talk about with iMac, listen, most USB devices are still USB-A. So the iMac doesn't have any of those, and then you're in dongle world. You're no better than anybody with a MacBook Pro using USB-C dongles in order to get USB-A. So that clean aesthetic that the purists, you know, say for the iMac, for most people, that's not gonna happen. If you have even a USB flash drive, most of them are not USB-C, or even the ones that people typically have are USB type A. So you need dongles. Then he does this really funny skit, which he acknowledges is exaggerated, uh, where he's showing the setup of a Mac Mini versus an iMac. Um, and all the blatant stuff is obvious, like the extra mic and the DSLR or mirrorless camera and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but one thing that might have slipped is that he adds that you have to add or put on the desk the keyboard and mouse with the Mac Mini. He doesn't mention that you also have to do that for an iMac. You have to put the keyboard and mouse on the table too. So again, like he said, that's not that's not a big point because he acknowledges he was exaggerating. But his point remains that it is less set up and less wires. And you know, to that point, that's fair. If two more wires, the wire to connect the display and then connect the display to your computer are going to kill you, then, you know, I there's nothing I can do for you there point given. But yeah, he said he's basically saying all that to say that he would rather have a weaker processor with a screen than a more powerful processor without a screen. But as I showed, you know, that can be fixed. Whereas with the iMac, you can't fix the chip that's in it. Now, next to a point that Luke and I both agree on, and this is actually the strongest point for the Mac mini. When you go to change or upgrade or replace anything in your setup with the iMac, you have to replace the computer. Did your screen break? You got to get a new computer. Did your computer break? You got to get a new computer. Did your webcam break? You probably need to get a new computer. Your microphone, same thing. Your speakers, same thing. Uh, keyboard and mouse, you can replace. So those are the peripherals. But other than that, everything else, whether you they broke or you just wanted to upgrade it, you can't do that. And Luke says as much. You know, he says he's used to using the 27-inch 5K display. I'm used to using a 32-inch 4K display. And I couldn't imagine using something smaller, nearly 10 inches smaller, almost a foot <laughs> less screen real estate for video editing, content creation, multitasking, and stuff like that. Um, but the difference is, once again, if I want to change my setup, if I want to change out my speakers or my display or any of that, I can do all that without changing the heart of my system. Um, and like Luke says, if you want to get that new Mac Pro or you want to get any of that new stuff, uh, you can just swap out the computer. Everything else connects just fine. And I don't want to beat a dead horse, but you get the point. If it's not a keyboard or a mouse, you have to replace your entire computer every time you want to change something about it. So as I said, if you don't plan on upgrading anything about your computer for the next five to even 10 years, uh, then yeah, go with the iMac. But if you plan on changing even your microphone or speakers or display, 
uh, you should probably go with the Mac Mini. So then he shows the price. It's like 17, 75, 63 for his Mac Mini setup with professional studio monitors, the KRKs and all that stuff. And remember, if you're just trying to match um, or be slightly better, you don't have to spend $266 for your speakers. And that's where a good chunk of that final price comes out to. And earlier in the video, I showed you a mock-up that I think would do very well in comparison to the all-in-one iMac. But what you're getting with this, in addition, is the ability to keep what you have, even if you want a more powerful computer. And I don't know about you guys, so let me know down in the comments below, but the computer is probably the thing that gets swapped most often in an entire setup. Uh, audio is always going to sound great if you've got a great high quality pair of speakers. A 4K display will always be a 4K display and 8K won't be the standard for many years now. A keyboard is always a keyboard. Uh, so, you know, if you buy a high end keyboard, that's good to go. Um, you know, I've got MIDI controllers, audio interfaces, all that stuff. As long as it's high quality, it's good to go. But what you can do is you can do all those things faster. And that comes by upgrading the computer. And that's what there are new models of every single year. So yeah, your computer is probably going to get replaced within the next five years. Now, Luke says that what seems to be implied here, not saying that anybody's actually saying this, is that you can do a lot more with the Mac Mini with all these peripherals at the same price than you could with the iMac. And obviously you couldn't at the same price, you could probably do about the same, but it's the versatility. Once again, swappability, upgradeability, you name it, those things that you just don't get with the iMac. I don't know who's out there saying that you can do more. It's the same chip and it's not actually the same chip. The one in the Mac mini is better and it has a better fan. So you are gonna even see minor performance increases from the Mac mini versus the iMac. But other than that, yeah, having custom peripherals is huge. And you know, most people who get a desktop, it's because they have real work to do. They really have to concentrate on their work when they're working. As where with a laptop, you wanna be able to get stuff done, absolutely. But you really, you're willing most times to sacrifice a little bit of performance for portability. People on desktop aren't looking for portability. So it's all about that power. It's all about customization. It's all about optimization. And then Luke goes into aesthetics, which once again, the iMac wins all day with aesthetics. It's going to be cleaner. It's going to have less quartz because it's an all-in-one. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, saying that you have to plug in the speakers. Yeah, you do if you want decent speakers. But the Mac Mini does have speakers. It's not like you can't hear sound um, with the Mac Mini without speakers. It's just, it's, it's really not good. And then Luke makes the point, yes, that if you need anything other than two USB C ports, like I said earlier, you're going to be in dongle land. You're going to be in dock land. You're going to be, you know, dealing with ugly wires just like you would with the Mac Mini. So the whole clean aesthetic thing kind of falls apart if you need anything other than just an iMac. And then Luke goes on to talk about chips, and we already talked about that a little earlier. Yes, the Mac Mini has a better cooling fan and a slightly more powerful GPU than the M1 chip in the base model iMac. Uh, but then he says that for every point you can make with the Mac Mini, there's a direct counterpoint for the iMac. Uh, what's the counterpoint for having swappable peripherals? You have a cleaner setup that's not really clean if you need anything more than two USB Thunderbolt ports? What's the counter to the Mac Mini having a more powerful M1 chip? That the iMac has a slimmer, more portable design? They're desktops. Neither of them are going anywhere. I mean, I don't know how much you guys move around your desktops, but this thing has been sitting there since I bought it. Yeah, so I don't know that there's a direct counterpoint for every point you could make uh, in promoting the Mac Mini or the iMac. But yeah, that's why I think that the Mac Mini, nine times out of 10 is the better choice for most people. I mean, unless this is being used for school, like in a classroom setup, you just got iMac set up. Yeah, it's better. If you need just a kitchen countertop computer uh, that you, know, you can look up recipes and watch YouTube videos on in the kitchen, yes, the iMac is better. But other than that, and let me know in the comments because I don't have every use case. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I do. Anybody who has an office, a home office with a desk, you should buy the Mac Mini. I'm, I'm just going to say <laughs> you should buy the Mac Mini. So anyway, guys, let me know what you thought of all of these points uh, down in the comment section below. Be sure to like the video if you like the video. Subscribe, guys. It's always great listening and hearing from other tech YouTubers and creators and getting these conversations moving. So guys, click the bell so you get a notification on your phone when I drop new videos as we cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show.